here. Then any other, like, you know, you, you were talking about the needs for, you know, these kind of trainings and any other, like, training topics do you think, you know, should be added to, you know, training to... Mm -hmm. I say the grief for the residents, mm -hmm. how to deal with their um, racism. Do you mean um, grief for residency when... How to cope with it, I believe, oh, okay. yeah. At Bethany had a um, counselor for the CNAs. Mm -hmm. It was like one to sign, but I didn't really want to go to it at all. But they had, they did have, I don't know how it is here at Oakcrest, but they did have a person assigned to help you with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. I would say I believe maybe like more knowledge on maybe like wound and like skin. We do get like knowledge on skin tears and like skin conditions. I think. We did do it in my class on like the diseases, like based on if it's like MRSA, or if it's in a bacteria, or if it's like in the hand or urine. I think we need more knowledge on that, mm -hmm. like because I feel like I didn't forget a lot since my program, mm -hmm. and it's like gotta be careful. We have our, you know our PPE the protection when we do go in there, but I think should be more knowledge on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like what you're going into, someone with um, what is it called, C diff, like that. I didn't know about that. I never worked with it until I got here. That was it's very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about any other thoughts on um, stress management for for you? You talked a little bit about you know, bereavement coping skills, but mm -hmm. like what you would want to know. You know, we have a um, an app for the phone, as well as like a little laminated card on like mindfulness or like a deep mm. breathing. Is that something you'd use or is that something yeah. kind of like it's something you could just take for a minute or two and just... Yeah, I just think about, me on. personally, I just think about the generation of time it came from, like, I can't take it as a fence. Like, it's just words. Um, yeah. Like, you know. But maybe, I don't know, it could be like a person that's saying, like, say, the stress level, like, I get, I get really upset, like, when I can't get all my people up in the morning, because mm -hmm. it was too many residents, mm -hmm. and first shift, did not be happy with night shift when that happened, and I believe it just should be a better way to cope with that, and stress, like, the stress free of that, but it's not, all you could do is just puff and puff, leave, and I just leave and say, it's dumb. My DOA always show say, don't stress about it. If you don't get them all done, it's a 24-hour facility. But you don't fish, finish, it go to the next person. Mm -hmm. But everybody don't always understand that. Mm -hmm. well, I just like I just leave and say, it's over when I'm done. I'll do it again tomorrow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that just happened to me on um, this Sarah that I was working, and we were really short here, like a, I think two call offs, a call off, and I was on the hall, one of the hardest hall. And it was two new residents on there, and it was already a lot of, it was like 21 people on the hall, and I had at least 14 people on my list, and two of them were Hoyers, which I physically can't do on my own. And my nurse, she was really calm. She was like, I'm going to make this list and put everybody on that shape, but you do who you can. If not, just leave them alone. Mm -hmm. And it was like me, I did it. Like, I got up everybody except the two Hoyers and one other person. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I got up uh, 14, well, 14 minus 3 was Oh, here we count. I got up that many people, mm. and I and first shift was still mad. Mm. But it wasn't enough for him, but I was just like, I was a little stressed about it, about getting them done, and I felt bad. Like, I didn't get them all up, but I'm like, I literally just got up like that many people by myself within two hours. I started early, two and a half hours, so, yeah. You know, there's no way to strip. I don't know. Would you either go home and have a drink, probably? <laughs> 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 yeah. Is it like a deep breathing app on a phone? Is that something you'd use or not really? That'd be nice. So maybe a, a ball to squeeze, like to take your anger out home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd yeah. be nice, like just to calm down. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. What I do when I'm like doing a lot of stress, running around, because get ups are the hardest. You are running around like a chicken with no head, you're answering lights. Half the time you have first shift staring at you like you did something wrong. I just go in the bathroom, go in the resident room in the bathroom, and just breathe. That's how I could do it also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just go back out, put a smile on my face, and keep it moving. But also, 
Sarah's love for Resident Ruin that was just combative and pooped everywhere. It gave me the worst time ever. And I'm like, huh, I'm sweating. I'm tired. I go to the next resident room. And that person's just peppy, cheery. Just, oh, thank you so much for the help. And that just really will lift my spirit. Mm-hmm. I'll be good mm-hmm. for the rest of my show. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. happens a lot here. Like you get one person just gave you the spin around and go to the next mm-hmm. resident room. And they just so happy to see you. And they're like, it's something in you just really, it really helps. So it's the person that yeah, makes really you gets you through the rest of your show. Yeah, because like I was just ready to pull my hair out in that room. I go to the next one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and as, as far as bereavement goes, any other thoughts on what might help you as far as tools? You said at Bethany you didn't want to use a counselor, mm. but because it sounds like that's pretty heavy duty, some of the you yes. know, grief bereavement issues mm. you've had to deal with here. I don't know, I just say deep breathing, maybe a bottle of the school. Okay. Okay. Or maybe just like I said, group talk, group therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But it can mm-hmm. turn to like a group argument, but maybe try group therapy. Mm-hmm. But nice mm-hmm. should be really close knit. We have our group talks all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. I think what gets me, like, get me through my shift, like my get ups, not only the residents, like the positive ones, but. Our co so like on my night shift, it's like 12 or 14 of us, and like we're really close. Mm-hmm. And like we will help each other out really well. Mm-hmm. Like we just partner up or do people together. Like, for example, um, here we have four halls we got the west side and the east side. I believe the west side is the devil side, it's crazy, it's harder. The east side is easier for me. Mm-hmm. And every time on the east side, I was on the east side, saying they go over to the west side to help out. Just because, like, that's what we do, like, mm-hmm. help out each other on, on a night shift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you want to ask? No, no, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, if you uh, if you want to add anything, um, you can tell us, and if, if, if there is none, maybe we can, you know, end the mm-hmm. interview here. Yeah, I think we're going to we... I think we talk about everything, my mm-hmm. whole career. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.